Shalom Mishpoka. This is a quick video from Goya Group. We're always striving to find the truth of the faith and the culture of the Abram or the Hebrews. The topic we will address here is one that leads to great contention amongst Yisrael or Israel. Who are the 10 tribes of the northern kingdom of Yisrael or more specifically, where are the 10 northern tribes today? The short answer is that no one can identify them from shore scripturally. But what can be said is that the texts inform us where they went after the Asher or the Assyrian captivity in the 8th century CE and where they will be gathered from in the great day of Yah, whenever that will be. It is Africa. As always, we will use two to three witnesses to establish any matter concerning the word of Yahuwah. The first witness is Yeshayahu or Isaiah chapter 11. In the first verse of each chapter of Torah lies the historical context. For example, the Nabi we're looking at now, Yeshayahu, looking at chapter 1, verse 1, informs the reader that the vision concerning Yahuda and Yerushalayim that Yeshayahu, son of Amatz, saw during the reigns of Uziyahu, Yotem, Akaz, and Kezekiah, kings of Yahuda. Therefore, we know that this Nabi only saw the captivity of the northern kingdom of Yisrael because there were several kings left in the southern kingdom after Kezekiah in 686. So he prophesied from Uzziah right here to Kezekiah right here and all the kings in between. Now he specifically stated that Kezekiah and Akaz as they shared rulership right there. In chapter 11 of this book, the rod promised from the son of Yishai or Jesse is prophesied which is an obvious messianic prophecy due to the fact that Daoud or David and his father Yishai are dead over 300 years at this point. And this is all before the Babylonian captivity, which started after Zedekiah 586 right there. The verses we're looking at will point to where the northern kingdom will be. Verses 10 through 12 read, In that day, the root of Yishai will stand as a banner for the people. The nations will rally to him and his resting place will be glorious. In that day, Yahweh will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the surviving remnant of his people from Asher, which is Assyria, from Mizraim, Lower Egypt, from Pathros, which is Upper Egypt, from Cush or Ethiopia, from Elam, from Shinar or Arabia, from Hamath, which is Syria, and from the islands of the sea or the Mediterranean Sea. All of the places mentioned are in Africa. This is just a geographical fact. The Nabi gave you exactly where they will be gathered from. This is Arabia or Shinar. Here you have Lower Egypt, Upper Egypt. You have Hamath around here and all the other parts whereabout. There's Elam, there's Asher. Everything mentioned is right here, just as the prophet stated. Verse 12 continues. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Yisrael from where they just was just listed. He will assemble the scatter of the people of Yahuda from the four quarters or corners of the earth. The text is very clear. When the second exodus occurs, the exiles of Yisrael, who are the northern kingdom in this context, there's the Yisrael, the northern kingdom, there's the southern kingdom. They will be gathered from Africa. Then he explains that the southern kingdom, who is right here, have yet to be exiled, will be gathered from the four corners of the earth. Each of these points represent captivity spots that the northern kingdom or Yisrael were taken to. There's Hamath right there, northern Syria. These are islands of the Mediterranean and all along the path across the rivers, which is the Euphrates, which was the dividing line for the Assyrian Empire. Everything east of the Euphrates was Assyria. Everything west of it was Africa. And this whole land right here was Asia Minor. So, as you can see, the prophecy was in respect to where the northern kingdom was being taken. The second witness of this is Zephaniah or Zephaniah chapter 3. As before, we will put the Nabi or prophet into context for greater discernment by the first verse of the first chapter of his book. 1-1 one, one reads, The word of Yahuwah that came to Zephaniah, son of Cushi, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Kezekiah, during the reign of Yoshayahu, or Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Yahuda. This Nabi, or prophet, wrote and prophesied during the reign of Yoshayahu, 
or Josiah, right there, which is the boy king who was righteous and loved by Yahweh and reigned until 609 BCE. As you can see, this is long from the captivity, at least 30 years or so. So there's no talk about the uh, southern kingdom going into captivity here. During this time, only the southern kingdom was free. The northern kingdom was in captivity. The southern kingdom of Yahudah was still free. But as you can see, the Assyrian Empire, which wasn't taken down until Babylon in 626 BCE, ruled the entire reign. The dark green represents the main of their empire across the Euphrates. Everything east of it, this is all Assyria. Everything to the west of it is all Africa. And they came into the land and they controlled all this region. Verse 10 of chapter 3 reads, from beyond the rivers of Cush, my worshipers, my dispersed or scattered people will bring my offerings. This not be or prophet is referencing the dispersed who are only the northern kingdom at this point in history and where they will return from. Cush is another name for Ethiopia right there, which is in Africa. Therefore, the dispersed of the northern kingdom are coming from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia in the day where Yahweh grabs the remnant of his people from the beyond the rivers is to the west of the rivers of Cush. The Nile, Niger, all of them are rivers of Ethiopia. You have upper Mithraim or in lower Mithraim, Libya, and this is Cush, everything else. The third witness is from Ezra Dalet or second Ezra of the apocryphal writing. This word is from the late Latin apocryphus, meaning secret, not approved for public reading. And from ancient Greek, apocryphos, meaning hidden or obscure, and were writings removed from canon by the Protestant Reformation and through the Catholic Council of Trent in the 16th century, about 1545 to 1563. So these writings were legit for over 1,000 years after the formation of Catholicism. But after the split by the Protestants, it was decided they must be removed right before 1619, for whatever reason you may think. The reason Second Edras was removed was probably due to the very passage people try and use to claim that Latino and Native American heritage for the Northern Kingdom. Prior to this point right here, in the Council of Trent, they basically kept all of the Apocrypha in the works. After this, you get canon by the church. Ezra was Ha-Nabi Ahmet, or the true prophet in English. After the Nabi Zerubbabel, which means freed from Babel in English, and the construction of the second temple after the Babylonian captivity, as mentioned before. And looking at the first verse of the first chapter of his first book gives the historical context needed for the best understanding. It reads, in the first year of Koresh, which is Cyrus I, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of Yahuwah spoken by Yarm Yahu, which is Jeremiah, Yahuwah moved the heart of Koresh, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm and to also put in writing. So he goes on and he explains how the uh, southern kingdom will be freed and have to build everything up. Yahuwah lifted up this king and preserved him and aided him as he was the king who defeated Babylon. Therefore, Koresh decreed that Yehuda, or the southern kingdom, held captive by Babylon, would be freed in order to build their second temple. This command was not fulfilled, and Yahuwah replaced Koresh with Darius, or Darius I, who did fulfill his promise to aid the Yehudim in the building of the temple. Chapter 13 of the apocryphal writings of Ezra focus on the dreams of Ezra about HaMashiach, or the Messiah. So clearly this book wasn't removed because it spoke against the Messiah or did not witness him. We will thoroughly examine verses 39 to 46 of chapter 13, which will explain exactly where the 10 northern tribes will be gathered from when Yahusha comes to collect them. It is the same place they have been since the Asher or the Assyrian captivity. It reads, and whereas you saw that he gathered another peaceable multitude to him, those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoner out of their own land in the time of Husha, or Osei, the king, whom Shalamansar, the king of Asher, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so they came into another land. But they, the ten northern tribes, took this counsel among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. 
This is speaking directly to the captivity of the northern kingdom under the king Husha by the Assyrian king Shalamansar, which is born out in history and scripture. And he took them east across the waters. They went east. This is the Euphrates River, which was the natural dividing line for the Asher Empire. To continue, verse 42, that they might there keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land. So wherever they went, they went there to keep their laws. So it cannot be Native Americans, Latinos, or Native Mer Mexicans, because there is no history of them ever keeping the laws of the Most High, and they do not claim the heritage. And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them, and held still the flood till they were passed over. So they went west and into the Euphrates rivers after going east, which was the opposite direction they came from. Yahuwah held the water still until they passed over the Euphrates River. There are no boats mentioned, nor any journey down the Euphrates into the Persian Gulf and into the Indian Ocean. For through that country, there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. And the same region is called Aserat. They went through the country for 1.5 years, not over the ocean or any large body of water needed to reach the Americas. Then they dwelt there until the latter time. And now when they shall begin to come, the northern tribes dwelt where they traveled after they left the captivity of Asher and where they will be gathered by Yahusha, just as foretold by the two previous Nabim or prophets. They crossed the Euphrates, went for a year and a half through the country and ended up exactly where the Yoruba and the Igbo people tell you in Nigeria. For anyone confused as how it took 1.5 years to go from the Euphrates to West Africa, please consider the Appalachian Trail on the east coast of North America. It takes experienced hikers in good shape about four months to hike about 2,000 miles over a paved path with cleared areas. If you consider the multitude of the 10 northern tribes with the elderly, young, livestock, over dense foliage and brush, 1.5 years seems totally reasonable to travel 3,000 miles. This picture is what some claim those verses state. Now, this makes no sense as it goes against what the Nabim before Ezra stated, and it contradicts what Ezra himself stated in the text. There was no Persian Gulf or no Indian Ocean adventure, no traveling over the water for a year. None of that is mentioned. So in conclusion, according to scripture, the 10 northern kingdoms that will be gathered in the great day of Yah are coming from Africa and from the mouth of three Nabim no less. As always, please do not take our word for it, but rather seek the matter out for yourselves. Shalom.